Hello everybody and welcome to part number 7 of the Super Castlevania 4 LP. In this section we have the library stage as I like to call it. And when I was a kid I hated the library stage. I really did. I thought it was the worst thing ever. But now I, I like it. It's just a chill stage. Not too difficult. It's a good stage. What can I say about it? This stage introduces a few new enemies. Right there you have the more uh, armored knights. This time they have lances instead of axes, but they just walk back and forth. They shouldn't kill you. I, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but when you complete a stage, you lose all of your hearts. So when you start up a new stage, the best thing to do is break a bunch of candles and try to build up some hearts. Because tossing sub weapons at enemies, especially at this point in the game, is really helpful. It's quite. I recommend that a cross is your best friend. <laughs> it's really helpful. It is the best sub weapon. I don't even think it's a debate. I think it's the best sub weapon. Always bring it along and fill up some hearts. Always when you start a stage, just fill up hearts. But make sure don't don't like stand below a heart and whip up because it might be a sub weapon. And so just take your time, make sure you see what it is before you uh before you get it. Because you don't you don't want to downgrade from a cross to say a knife or a timer especially. You don't want to do that. You want to stay equipped with your cross, because the cross is the boss. That is what I like to say. It is a rhyme, and I love my rhymes, even though I'm not very good at them. This section, you have some shielded gargoyles, I'll call them. And my strategy is just fall down as quickly as possible, and try to minimize your damage. As you can see, this time I don't do so well, I get hit quite a few times, but I grab a pork chop right there. So, you know, I get through it. But the boss in this stage isn't too difficult anyway, so you don't need that much health, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This is the portion that I struggled with as a child. These floating library books, I'll call them. They, uh, they gave me a lot of trouble because I just couldn't get the jumps down when I was a kid. Especially the ones that you know, move slowly for a short period of time, and then decide that they move, they want to move really fast for a, a burst, and then go back to being slow. And also, the enemies off the library books, if they hit you, you're obviously going to die, which I still don't like to this day. It's one of those moments I consider cheap in this game, but it's not much of an issue. It's not that bad. It's a... It's one moment in a very fair challenge game. I'm not gonna call the game unfair. This, this section right here, we have some paintings that grab hold of you and they don't hurt you at all, they just grab you. Much like the purple ghoul hands in stage number two, if I remember correctly. They serve no purpose, they just want to slow you down, I guess. They don't want you to make it up to Dracula because they know you're gonna beat up Dracula. They know that Dracula is no match for Simon Belmont. Uh, remember to crouch right here because as you can see, the floor will move up like something's under it. <laughs> like there's something under it, I don't know what it is, maybe it's a mouse or that's a pretty big mouse, a rat. And somehow it propels you upwards, but so if you're standing you're gonna hit you're gonna get hit by those spikes, but if you're if you're ducking, you will remain safe, which is great. And always check the walls for goodies, because even if you don't know where any of them are, just swing at all of them, because if you can find a big pork chop, it may save your life. Because in this game, keeping your sub-weapons makes it a whole lot easier. I mean, it's certainly not impossible to beat the game without the cross. I've done it before I knew about the secret at the end of the game, which we'll get to later. Right there, there's a bunch of hearts. Always hit those. I remembered that. <sighs> what is- I don't know what that thing is. What could possibly do that to you? Maybe that's a trap designed by tra er, designed by Dracula himself. Who knows? Anyway, watch out for those statues. They may look like statues, but they will drop the ball they're holding, so you gotta remember to- or just trigger the ball dropping and then wait patiently. 
I know that's difficult for some people, and you know, it's difficult for me, waiting patiently. I'm not, I'm not much of the patient type. I like to run around and get things done as quickly as possible. Oh, what was that noise right there? Maybe that was an extra life. Anyway, here is the boss. It is a giant axe knight. My strategy, throw crosses, stand on this platform, duck. His attacks won't kill you quick enough. He only has two. First he throws his axe, and then he'll hit it at the ground and make fire. Then he'll break out his sword, but you should kill him before he kills you. Just keep hitting him with your cross slash whips, or both of them if you have both of them. You should always have your whip. What am I talking about? Anyway, what's this? The floor is rumbling? Oh no! We'll see what happens in part number eight.